Gary Franchi is on the road supporting Ron Paul with the Revolution Pack. I'm Danny Panzella. Last night, the Senate passed S. 1867, the National Defense Authorization Act, also known as the Indefinite Detention Bill. Within this treasonous bill is the power of the U.S. military to indefinitely detain an American citizen with no charge, no trial, and no oversight whatsoever. Senate Intelligence Committee Chair Dianne Feinstein attempted to bar the provision from being used on American soil to ensure, quote, the military won't be roaming our streets looking for suspected terrorists, end quote. The amendment failed, but Senator Feinstein voted in favor of the bill anyway. S-1867 is a treasonous violation of the Sixth Amendment of the Constitution that guarantees every American citizen who is accused of a crime the right to due process, a trial by jury, and a counsel for their defense. Now an American citizen just has to be accused of being involved in some minor way of having a possible connection to terrorism, and they can be abduct abducted by the military or law enforcement, never to be heard from again. You may recall in April 2009 when the Department of Homeland Security released a report on domestic terrorism. The report referred to those who were in favor of states' rights, opposed to abortion or immigration, or those who often refer to the Constitution as potential domestic terrorists. Sounds like the Tea Party, doesn't it? Do we really want a government that thinks the Tea Party are extremists to have this power? How long will it be before the administration is indefinitely detaining Tea Party activists or other political enemies? One even more horrific amendment that was defeated thanks to Rand Paul was 1274, which would have given the federal government the power to detain U.S. citizens until Congress declared the war on terror over. It also gave the feds the power to keep an American incarcerated even if they were tried and found not guilty. That amendment was only narrowly defeated with a 45 to 59 vote. What is happening in the halls of Congress? Are they so far removed from reality that they could so easily vote away sacred liberty? We are constantly told that terrorists hate us for our freedoms. So they react by taking our freedoms away? The terrorists have won America. I implore you, please, start paying attention to what your representatives are doing. Take an hour each week to research what bills they are working on and then reach out. Make a five minute phone call to let them know if they're representing you correctly. In other police state news, you may remember a few months ago when I took my son Xander to protest the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. When we arrived, the Fed was surrounded by the NYPD. When I questioned the police about the reason for the increased security, here's what they told me. What's going on today? They don't usually have the feds around it. No, it was going to be a flash mob. You know, they never showed up. Uh, okay. All this police presence for a flash protest? It has come to light that the officer's comment about getting their money's worth referred to a program called the Paid Detail Unit, implemented by Mayor Giuliani in 1998. Private corporations pay an average of $37 to $50 an hour for a uniformed officer of the NYPD to provide private security services. The officer is indemnified by the taxpayer, not the corporation, which means the taxpayers are responsible for any lawsuits that may arise out of the security service. New York City gets a 10% administration fee on top of the fee paid to the officers. And the New York City budget estimated $11.8 million paid to NYPD in 2011. Other Wall Street firms that are known to have used the paid detail include Goldman Sachs, the World Financial Center, and the New York Stock Exchange. Truth Squad's Inside NYPD Sources report that 11,000 officers take part in the paid detail unit and use the unit to supplement their salaries. The sources could not confirm if the paid detail unit was used against the Occupy Wall Street protests. This week, New York City Mayor Bloomberg called the NYPD his own personal army. It's unclear whether he believes that this is because he's the mayor of New York or because he is part of the Wall Street 1%. Mayor Bloomberg is worth a reported $18 billion. He was only worth $9 billion when he was elected to his first term and there are currently an estimated 290,000 Bloomberg terminals on Wall Street trading floors all around the globe, generating approximately $5.2 billion a year in revenue for the mayor. It's no surprise that Bloomberg considers the NYPD an army, being that the military contractor Rand Corporation has been consulting with the NYPD for at least half a decade, writing policies and procedures. 
The recent implementation of biometric iris scanners was a suggestion of the RAND Corp, paid for by the Department of Homeland Security, in a clear move to further turn the NYPD into a federalized paramilitary force which serves as a model for other police departments across the country. In other NYPD news, not only can Wall Street firms hire the NYPD as a private army to quash rebellions against the bankers, they can also use the NYPD Intelligence Division to spy on all of Lower Manhattan. The Lower Manhattan Security Coordination Center is a fusion center, which according to John Bush of OperationDiffuse.com, is used to fuse information databases from federal and state government sources like motor vehicles, social security, FBI, and NYPD with their partners in the private sector, such as Facebook and Google, who have admitted such relationships. According to archived SEC documents, Police Commissioner Ray Kelly promised Edward Forst, a Goldman Sachs VP at the time, to give Wall Street access to the Fusion Security Center. 2,000 private spy cameras owned by Wall Street firms, together with approximately 1,000 more owned by the NYPD, are relaying live video feeds of people on the streets in Lower Manhattan to the center. Once at the center, they can be integrated for facial recognition and license plate analysis. New York City is estimated to have as many as 40,000 public and private surveillance cameras watching over its streets, outnumbered only by London and the Chinese city of Shenzhen. The system is referred to as Argus, named after the Greek mythological giant with a hundred eyes. The chief leader, the weekly New York City Civil Service newspaper, identified Goldman Sachs, Citigroup, the Federal Reserve, and the New York Stock Exchange as the Wall Street firms with access to the security center. Other sources say most of the major Wall Street firms have an on-site representative. The corruption of the top Wall Street banksters knows no bounds when Wall Street executives that serially commit fraud can sit next to police officers trying to keep our city safe and spy on the citizens of New York City. We can all rest assured that the same banksters that have stolen trillions of dollars via the Federal Reserve bailouts will have the best interests of we the people at heart when employing the New York City Police Department as their mercenaries. As always, remember to like, share, favorite, and subscribe to The Reality Report. If you want to join others who have a heart to save the republic, then join RTR.org, the social network of the revolution. To catch up with me for the latest articles and videos, please visit TruthSquad.tv. For Gary Franchi and The Reality Report, I'm Danny Panzella. Thank you.